Hi folks, Abby here from OurWanderingFamily.com and I wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about grocery shopping as a full-time family. So we are currently in Lordsburg, New Mexico. If you haven't heard of it, not a surprise. It's a really, really, really small town that has one grocery store, a supermercado, and there's about five aisles. So one thing I decided this year as we got back into full-time travel was I was not going to shop unless we needed it. I had felt over the last couple years that we were kind of going through wasting things that we weren't using the food that we had and taking up unnecessary space. Anyone who travels with kids or travels with a large group knows space is at a minimum. So I want to show you a few things. We just came from Carlsbad, New Mexico. I think there in Carlsbad, we had a few more options. We had an Albertsons, a Walmart, but still it's so interesting how prices change from when you're in the Southwest in New Mexico to what we were paying for items in Missouri and in Illinois, the Midwest where we just came from. So first thing I wanted to show you was I went over to the small grocery store here in Lordsburg and I was able to find a few things I find really interesting. First, I, we needed some jam. Uh, this is an organic, you might recognize this full circle market brand. Um, it's pretty common, I think, in Jewel, Osco's in the Midwest. This was only $2.50 for this jar. Now, the other jams that I was looking at that were uh, Smuckers or more name brands, jams that had high fructose corn syrup in them and chocked full of stuff were more expensive. But this was a tiny little jar tucked up in the top of the aisle that I wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't taking the time to look. And that's my number one tip take time to look. If you're someone who is really brand specific, you might find that difficult as you travel around. So be willing to look at different brands. Be willing to take the extra minute or so to go through all of the different jams because what ends up happening is you find something $1.50 to $2 less, but is actually better for you. So I was really happy to find this, $2.50. Our kids love, love bacon. Bacon has gotten really, really expensive over the last like year or two. I mean, in some places we have seen just regular run-of-the-mill bacon prices be $8 for a pack. So we don't get bacon an awful lot because it's expensive. However, in Carlsbad at the Albertsons, they had this brand for $5. And what was so interesting was that major labels were still like six or seven dollars a pack. But this, tucked again, if you look, was just tucked in there for five dollars. Hickory smoked, it's thick cut, it's a great brand. I was super thrilled, so the kids get to have bacon. Now back here to Lordsburg, what I love about the Southwest is that you're going to find local products in some of our favorite foods, which is Mexican food. So here at this little teeny tiny grocery store, I was able to get these awesome big giant burritos made here in New Mexico for $4. There are 10 in here. They're huge and they're only made with four ingredients. This is my thing about tortillas. They are so chocked full of stuff and yet our kids love tortillas. They love quesadillas. Our youngest will just eat a tortilla. So when we get into the Southwest, I know that we're going to do a lot of tortillas because I know I'm going to A, get them at a really good price and B, I'm going to get them locally made and they're only going to have a few ingredients and it's going to be a budget saver. So I was super thrilled. Now, you might notice a few other things on here. Here's one of sort of the ups or downs, depending on the kind of eater you are, about shopping throughout the country and having to shop at small grocery stores. You're really limited. So I knew that we were gonna be doing sandwiches and chips. This bag here, thankfully, kids love potato chips, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest, we are not all the time organic, clean eaters. I buy as my budget allows. So $4, the Apple Jacks were on sale for $2. However, 
I paid $4 for Reese's Puffs, which is pretty ridiculous, but we needed some cereal. Um, another downside to shopping sometimes in smaller areas is this particular store had no bread options, like absolutely no bread options. And I debated whether or not to even buy bread. So I ended up getting just what they had, which was their local brand. And it was a dollar for this loaf, but it's not good bread. I mean, it's got the ingredients list is just, it just goes on forever, you know? And that was kind of a, um, that was kind of a compromise. You know, sometimes I think when you live on a budget or you are trying to shop local with what you have to work with, you can't always eat as well as you would like. Now, again, you're right. I probably could have just not bought bread, but I have eaters who primarily just eat bread. So there you go, had to do it. Uh, another really cool thing is that sometimes if you go to buy a particular fruit, and let's say, so for instance, I was in Carlsbad a few days ago shopping, and I knew we wanted to have blueberry pancakes. So I went over and I was gonna buy some blueberries. And the non-organic blueberries were $5 for a pint. And I thought, that's really crazy. Like, I'm not gonna buy a small pint of blueberries for $5. We're gonna do something else, right? And so I thought, well, let me just go over and see what the organic blueberries are. Like, maybe if it's the same kind of price or a little bit cheaper, maybe I'll pick them up. So I went over and I found a pint of organic blueberries on sale for $1.99. So non-organic was five bucks. Organic, $1.99. So don't always just assume that non-organic is gonna be cheaper than organic because sometimes that's not the case. Now, something else I love about the Southwest is fresh vegetable options are way cheaper, cilantro, kale, avocado, onions, garlic, cucumbers, zucchinis. They are all relatively cheaper, I've noticed, in the southwest and west areas than when you're in the Midwest and in the north. I paid 79 cents for avocados the other day, and when we left Illinois, avocados were $2.50. Cents. So much of that has to do with the region, where things are grown, where they're coming from. So don't be afraid to shop local in regards to how things are shipped across the country. Now, there are going to be things up in the Midwest that are cheaper there than they are here. On the East Coast, things are going to be cheaper. In the South, seafood is so cheap. It is not cheap up North for seafood but it is so cheap, especially along the Gulf. We love and enjoy seafood way more when we're in the South than we do when we are up in the North. Uh, another thing I noticed was at this grocery store here in Lordsburg, the strawberries, and I've noticed this across New Mexico too, strawberries tend to be cheaper than any other fruit. So apples, grapes, uh, Mangoes are a little bit cheaper. Pineapples were a little bit about the same price, but this was $1.49. It's non-organic, but it was $1.49. They also had it in a, like they had five of these. So again, you kind of have to look. Another thing I do or another tip I can share is I often base what we eat on where we are. I also base it on what, so if you're a meat eater and we're meat eaters, we will base our meat proteins on what is on sale. I don't always go into a store saying, I have to have chicken. Like if I'm making a dish that has chicken, I might say to myself, chicken's expensive, but the pork is on sale. Would that still be good if I just swapped out chicken for pork? And another thing I do is I will often, when I'm at the store, um, I will look to see because a lot of stores will discount certain things if they're really close to their expiration date. So I was able to get, and this was from Walmart, um, these pork chops, okay? They were $4 for the pork chops because they were expiring the next day. I brought them home, 
immediately stuck them into the freezer. As long as you freeze it immediately, it will be absolutely 100% fine. So a lot of times I will look for the reduced tag on a lot of things. And if I can come home and immediately freeze it, I will do that and then I will base meals around that. So for today, I pulled this out of the freezer. It's gonna thaw and this is what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. Do not do this if you're not going to use the meat soon, right? So like don't freeze it, pull it out and then let it thaw for a day or two. Not a good idea. It's just, uh, and maybe you might do that, but I don't wanna do that. I think that's with meat that is close to an expiration date, freeze it immediately, use it the day you thaw it, just to be safe. But again, I saved $1.33 by shopping like this. So that's dinner tonight. And I'm just gonna build it around whatever we have because we are boondocking after we leave here and then we're gonna be with family in LA. So I don't wanna have a lot of stuff. Uh, finally, I just wanted to show you our teeny tiny little pantry and I'm gonna stand away and let you get in there. I only use two shelves and you can see that it's packed, but it's just two shelves. That's what I allot us because I don't want to overspend. So a lot of times what we end up doing is, so this, I wanted to show, talk about this too really quick before I move on. This is from Trader Joe's. Before we left the Midwest, before we left Kansas City, I went to Trader Joe's because I love Trader Joe's for about a million things. I went and bought staples, items I knew that we would need across the board for multiple meals because I like the prices there. I like the organic options. I like Trader Joe's. So I did that. I went and stocked a few things in the pantry that I knew would be good things that we would use. That's another great suggestion. If you get into a city or whatever and you find a store you really love, and Trader Joe's, a Whole Foods, an Aldi, whatever, and you know you need staples, get them there and then let those be the basis that you build all your meals around. We used this last night as a substitute for soy sauce. It's amazing. It's coconut aminos. We use it in place of our soy sauce. We had the best fried rice last night off of the Blackstone. All right, I think that's kind of it. I'm sure I forgot a lot of things. I'm sure you've got some really great suggestions. I would love to hear them. This is just a way that we kind of help keep our prices down and also we are working so hard to reduce our food waste. Food waste is such a huge problem in this country and whatever little bits we can do to reduce it, we should. And so that is one of my goals for 2020. I would love to hear your suggestions for how you make meals work on the road, what you do to budget for your family. You can leave a comment down below or you can go over and find us on any social media, Facebook or Instagram, just drop a message there. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.